In this video, I'm going to talk about how to solve a word problem involving a system of linear equations. We will use the technique called Gauss Jordan Elimination and Free Parameters. Here is our problem. The first step of solving a word problem is to set up variables. Or we can also call them unknowns. In this problem, the farmland requires certain amounts of minerals. There are three types of fertilizers available, and here are the contents of the fertilizers. The main part of this problem is this question. How many bags of each fertilizer we should use? Notice that every single problem has this type of question at the end. And we should always focus on it because it would tell us what the unknowns should be. To answer the question, how many bags of each fertilizer? Our unknowns should not focus on the minerals. Rather, we should answer the question directly by letting x to represent the number of bags of fertilizer 1. Notice that the phrase the number of Bags is very important. If you only say let x be the fertilizer 1, then it doesn't make sense because fertilizer 1 has the name fertilizer 1. We don't need x to represent fertilizer 1. x is representing the number of bags of fertilizer 1. Similarly, y and z represent the number of bags of fertilizer 2 and 3 respectively. After setting up the variables, the next step is to set up the equations. Our task in this problem is to attain the required amount of minerals. So, 15,250 units of mineral A must be obtained by using some of these fertilizers. Because there are x bags of fertilizer 1, and each bag of fertilizer 1 contains 2.5 units of mineral A. So, the amount of mineral A obtained from using fertilizer 1 will be 2.5 times x. The amount of minerals A obtained by using fertilizer 2 will be 5y. And the amount of mineral A by using fertilizer 3 will be 10z. This will give us the first equation. Similarly, by looking at mineral B, we can set up another equation, which is 40x plus 50y. plus 10c to give us 100,000 units of mineral B. In the last equation, by using x bags of fertilizer 1, we get 10x units of mineral C. y bags of mineral 2 will give us 15y units of mineral C. Z bags of fertilizer 3 will give us 15 Z units of mineral C. And altogether, they should make up 37,000 units of mineral C required. This finishes the setup of all three equations. After setting up the equations, the third step is to set up an augmented matrix. This step is fairly straightforward. All we need to do is to copy the coefficients carefully. Notice that we are only writing down the coefficients, so we do not need to write down x, y, and z in this matrix. 
When we are aligning the coefficients, make sure that these are all representing the coefficients of the same variable. Here, all of these are coefficients of x, all of these are coefficients of y, and all of these are coefficients of z. The word augmented indicates that there is something in extra to this matrix. And what we need to do is to have an extra column that contains all these constant terms. This finishes the augmented matrix. After that, we are going to perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on this augmented matrix to obtain the row reduced form. If you need some revision, please click on the link at the top right corner to check out the video on Gauss-Jordan elimination. In this video, I'm only going to quickly outline the steps of Gauss-Jordan elimination. First, we are going to pivot at this particular entry. We do this by performing 1 over 2.5 scalar multiplied to R1 to obtain this particular matrix. Next, we continue to pivot at this entry by eliminating these entries to make them zero. The matrix will look like this after pivoting. Next, we need to pivot at this entry by multiplying the reciprocal of negative 30 to the second row to obtain this matrix. And we continue to pivot at this entry by eliminating the entries in the same column and turn them into zero. At this stage, you can see that we have already obtained the reduced row echelon form, and therefore, our Gauss-Jordan elimination process has finished. Our next step is to write down the solutions provided by the reduced row echelon form. In this reduced row echelon form, there is no leading one in the last column. So our system of linear equations will not run into the no solution case. Also, there is no leading one in the third column, so this system has infinitely many solutions. To write down infinitely many solutions, we are going to use three parameters. We call that these three columns contain the coefficients of x, y, and z respectively. Because there are leading ones in these two columns, we do not need three parameters for x and y. But because there is no leading one in this column, we need a free parameter for z. So we are going to write down let z equals t be a free parameter. This t is not another variable. This t is representing a value, an arbitrary real number value. So the row of t and z is different because x, y, and z are unknowns, but t is a value. By looking at the first equation, we have 1x minus 6z. But z has the value t, so we have minus 6t is equal to negative 3500. In order to solve for the unknown x, we should move all the values to the right hand side. So we will get x is equal to 6t minus 3500. The second equation reads 1y plus 5z, but once again z has the value t, so we have plus 5t is equal to 4800. And in order to solve for the unknown y, 
we are going to move the value to the other side. So we will get negative 5t plus 4800 for y. Hence, we have the value for z, x, and y. All the unknowns are now solved. We can also rewrite our solution in a coordinate form. The first coordinate is x, so we are going to write down 6t minus 3500. The second coordinate is y, so we are going to write down negative 5t plus 4800. The third coordinate is z, and the value of z is t, so we are going to write down t. At this stage, we are very close to done. However, if we still recall, in the original problem, we need to give two specific options to the farmer. So, we still need to obtain feasible solutions. What does feasible solution mean? Mathematically, when we plug in t as arbitrary value, this will solve our system of linear equations. However, if any of these three entries are negative or fractional, it won't make sense because they are representing the number of bags of fertilizers. Therefore, we need to make sure that these three are non-negative integers. How can we do that? First, we are going to set up a linear inequality for each entry to make sure that every single entry is greater than or equal to zero. Next, we are going to solve all of them. We will add the 3500 to both sides and then divide by 6. This simplifies to 583 and one third. We are going to subtract 4800 on both sides. And then we are going to divide by negative 5. Because negative 5 is negative, we need to flip the inequality sign. And this is equal to 960. It will help us visualize the answers if we try to plot the results on a real line. 0 goes here, 583 and one third goes here, 960 goes here. The first inequality tells us that we have to include 583 and one third and then go to the right. The second inequality says that we have to include 960 and then go to the left. This inequality tells us to include 0 and then go to the right. The only overlapping region of all three inequalities is this particular interval. In other words, if we try to pick t to be any integer between 583 and one third and 960, then we will be fine. Alright, that's nice, but does it make sense to pick 584 or 585 to be our answer for t? I would say those are not the good options. This is because these numbers are representing the number of bags of fertilizers, and most likely these are sold in bulk. A better value for t could be 600. In this moment, our x, y, and z can be obtained by plugging in 600 into every single entry here, which gives us 100, 1800, and 600. Another possible value for t could be 700. If we plug in 700 into every t that you see here, our x, y, and z will become 700, 1300, and 700. 
these two solutions indicate that in order to attain the required mineral level, the farmer could buy 100 bags of fertilizer 1, 1,800 bags of fertilizer 2, 600 bags of fertilizer 3, or they could buy 700 bags of fertilizer 1, 1,300 bags of fertilizer 2, and 700 bags of fertilizer 3. These are the final solutions to this word problem involving system of linear equations. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and we will learn more fun math together. Thank you very much for watching.